Hey everyone, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Justin, and yesterday, just a few hours before it actually came through, I made a video about the Toronto Maple Leafs looking into a Matt Murray trade. What am I looking for out of that deal? What a deal might look like? And so here's my reaction to it. And if you've seen that video yesterday, you'd have a good idea of what my expectations were. And let's just say they were not met. Um, immediate reaction is that this is not a good deal for the Leafs. And I hate to say that, but it's the reality of it. I can't mask it. It's not a good deal. And that's not necessarily the fact that the Leafs went after Matt Murray. But if you do target Murray and you're going after a deal like that, you need to get more out of it. To get only 25% retained is not acceptable. And to only get the two draft picks, one of them being a seventh rounder in exchange for a cap dump on Ottawa's end, it's just not enough. Now, maybe if it was the two picks and 50% retained, or if it was only 25% retained, but we got a significant pick or a better roster player in return, as well as Matt Murray, maybe that makes the trade a little bit more tolerable. For myself, I was looking at both. I wanted Matt Murray at 50% retained and a roster piece, a young player, to take on that deal. Because in my eyes, Ottawa had their backs against the wall, that they were desperate to get rid of this contract. There was talks about a buyout. There was talks about a deal being sent to Buffalo in exchange along with the seventh overall pick in this year's draft. Now, I was mistaken. I was under the impression that that original deal had 50% retained on Matt Murray. It's my understanding that the deal was only 25% retained, but still, you need to get more if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs. Considering Matt Murray does have a 10-team no-trade list, he's got control on where he's going to go, he's got control on where he wants to waive his, kneel, his deal for, he elects to come to Toronto. Again, that, that gives the leverage for the Leafs. And the Leafs, if they don't go after Matt Murray, there are a couple other options either on the free agency market or in the trade market that they could go after, whereas the Ottawa Senators only had... My understanding is that only a couple of trading partners, and who knows if those were a part of Matt Murray's no trade list that he would have rejected more trades to. Who knows if other teams just weren't interested in giving up any assets. Who knows, but as far as I can see it, the Leafs had the leverage. So to walk out of that deal, receiving only Matt Murray as a roster piece, only 25% retained, so now you're paying him over 4.6% million dollars per year and to have the draft picks be a third rounder third rounder is all right seventh rounder completely insignificant it's just not enough and it shows me that obviously this guy is going to be our starter and obviously this is the guy that the Leafs wanted to target my initial reaction to the original talks with Matt Murray was that we don't want to go after this guy he's not a good enough starter he's not a proven enough starter in the last couple years at least he was obviously in his first couple years with Pittsburgh in the last few years he has not been a proven starter and I don't even really want that contract on the books as a backup but after hearing the conversations uh, pick up and and the trade that was proposed to Buffalo that's what sparked my interest because of the haul you could get in this deal and the Leafs didn't get it and now he's our starting goalie and I'm just not confident now, I do think that Matt Murray's got good hockey in him. I do think he's capable of surprising us. And I will be cheering for Matt Murray. That's a guarantee. But, I mean, the, the Leafs are in a position now where every single year counts. And it's it, 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 I don't mean that in the sense that if you don't win the Stanley Cup, like, it's a lost year. I, I just mean in the sense that We've had the big four on the Bucks now for what has it been, five years? More than that, ever since their entry-level contracts, right? So six years, and the Leafs have never gotten out of the first round. And every year that we waste now just gets us one year closer to free agency. And who knows what comes? Does that mean one of the players walk and we lose them for nothing? Does it mean that they want to stay, but they're going to keep demanding outrageous money. Either way, the Leafs lose every time. 
that they waste a year every time we inch closer to that unrestricted free agency. Now, I do think John Tavares will come back at a discount. I do think Matthews will stay in Toronto, but Matthews could command $13, $14 million if the projected cap is going to raise like they expect it to. Is Marner going to demand the money that Matthews got once again in free agency, which comes up in three years? Is Nylander going to ask for a raise? Because surprising enough to a lot of our viewers here in the Leafs media, Nylander's on a great deal right now. Is he going to ask for more? And so to have that much value on each single season and now have a starting goalie in Matt Murray, someone that's completely unproven, and as far as we can see, I mean, tomorrow's free agency, so perhaps the Leafs go out and get someone else that makes it more of a tandem or makes it more bearable with a backup that could steal the job. But as of right now, no backup. I mean, I've, I've said it time and time again. My, my perspective is that the backup should be a younger player. You're looking to groom them. It should be someone like Eric Schalgren. It should be someone like Joseph Wool. Uh, I think Ian Scott is not getting qualified, but if he sticks around, it should be someone like Ian Scott. But that's in the condition that your starting goalie is a proven starting goalie. If you had someone like John Gibson, who you know is going to play the vast majority of the games outside of injury or rest nights. But Matt Murray, you don't know what you're getting out of this player. We have no idea if he's going to come to Toronto and play like he was in Pittsburgh and all of a sudden it looks like a great deal. Or if he comes and plays like he played two years ago and was just a non-factor and a non-option, not capable, and you have nobody else to resort to if you're the Leafs, as of right now. Um, I'm tempted to hold off my reaction, my official reaction to this deal until, you know, start of training camp, because at that point, we'll have gone through free agency, perhaps the Leafs pick up another player um, with, uh, with the goalie market in, in unrestricted free agency, perhaps they trade for someone's RFA rights. Uh, perhaps they flip one of those picks. Like if they use that third rounder that they got in the Murray deal to go out and get someone, maybe it makes the, the trade look a little bit better. But as of right now, as of today, it is not a good deal. $4.6 million for Matt Murray is too much. End of story. If, if we were to have Matt Murray at $3 million, like I projected with a 50% retained, that would be something that I would be very open to. I would have a lot of tolerance for. But at 4.6, it's just way too much. Now, on the flip side, people are saying you give Matt Murray 4.6, but you're not willing to give someone like Jack Campbell more. Jack Campbell reportedly originally asked the Leafs for $7 million. Now, now was he ever going to get that? No, that was a starting number. But you probably end up in the neighborhood of about five and a half million dollars. So you do save almost a million dollars a year. And the fact that Jack Campbell would command a longer term deal than what Matt Murray's deal is for. So Matt Murray is set to now expire his contract at the same time that Matthews and Nylander will. So if you look to re-sign Matthews and Nylander, or if you look to go in a different direction, that, gu that gives you flexibility, whereas you'd be stuck on the books with uh, a Jack Campbell contract beyond that if you were to sign him to an extension now, because he, of course he'd be asking for five, six, seven years. Someone like Darcy Kemper would be in the same boat. He'd be looking for a longer term deal and he'd be looking for the neighborhood of five and a half, six million dollars a year. And that's pretty much the goalie market for starting goalies. Unless you go out and acquire someone in a trade, which there really aren't many trading partners for goalies right now, that's the market. So you have to look at this and compare. The Leafs spent zero assets on Matt Murray. None. They gave up future considerations, which is equivalent to nothing. They get a goalie, which is somewhat like going out in free agency and buying one. They paid less for Matt Murray than they would for Jack Campbell or Darcy Kemper, and they got two picks sent to them in return, which is not an option in free agency. If you look at it from that perspective, you can understand why Dubis and, and company wanted to go this route. They were able to get more than just the goalie that they wanted in a deal as opposed to going into free agency. So from that perspective, it's, it's not an issue for me. I'm happy that they got 
additional assets and spent less on Matt Murray than they would have for Darcy Kemper and Jack Campbell, who some people are making it seem like they are far and away better options than Matt Murray, which they really aren't. I mean, Darcy Kemper didn't steal games for the Colorado Avalanche en route to their Stanley Cup. He was good enough, and Colorado was an unbelievable team, and they won him games. In fact, they won games in the playoffs without uh, without Kemper. They did it in front of Francis. Kemper had eye injuries, and he's had a bit of an injury history in the past. So it's not like Matt Murray's injury history is so much worse than Darcy Kemper's. And you can say the exact same thing about Jack Campbell. He had a sub-900 save percentage in the playoffs against Tampa, yet they still pushed them to seven games because the Leafs performed well enough in front of him. Jack Campbell's not a proven starter in the league, and outside of one or two incredible months with the Leafs, which earned him Vesna conversation and an all-star ballot, he was not very good. And that pains me to say because I love Jack Campbell. I'm a big fan of his, and I wanted them to keep him. But if you're comparing apples to apples, it's not a significant, significant difference between Matt Murray and Jack Campbell. The big difference is that if you're keeping Jack Campbell, again, you're looking at a longer-term deal, some more commitment. You're looking at more money against the cap, and you don't get anything aside from Jack Campbell. Whereas Matt Murray, you get two picks. You get a little bit of comfort in the fact that it's only a two-year deal. You spend less than you would in free agency. And you never know, he could turn it around. At the end of the day, looking at all things considered... I'm not absolutely devastated. I've I've somewhat come to terms with Matt Murray being the starting goalie for the Leafs. As uncomfortable as it makes me, I'm trying to look at the bright side and, and be optimistic about it and hope he has a breakout season and a comeback season. But at the end of the day, just all things considered, you needed more out of that deal. If you're looking at the deal as it stands with all the factors considered, with Ottawa being the position that they're in, with Toronto being in the cap situation they're in, you needed 50% retained. Needed, needed. And Dubas didn't want to walk into free agency and sign any forwards or defensemen or whoever else he needs to shore up this roster without having definitive answers on how much he's spending on the goaltending. So I understand that they didn't want to wait out Ottawa and put Ottawa on added pressure to make them consider buying him out, to make them look at other trading options and not finding any and then coming down in their ask. I get that point because, again, you want certainty before you head into free agency and play around with the remaining money that you have if you don't know how much remaining money you've got. But Ottawa was still in a position to give up more here. And I'm confident they could have. I'm confident they should have. I've got buddies in Ottawa. And they're all jumping up and down because they were able to get rid of Matt Murray without costing them any roster players. Because that was like the bare minimum requirement that you would think would be involved in this deal. And it wasn't. So looking at the deal, I'm not happy with the deal. But at least looking at the bright side, we've got a goalie. We've got certainty. We know how much money we have to spend in free agency. Go after someone like Ilya Simsonov. Shore out the bottom six of your roster. Make a couple trades if you want to. If you want to move Justin Hall off the books, I think you should. If you want to move Jake Muzzin off the books, I think you should. If you want to move Alex Kerfoot off the books, I think you should. Gives you a little bit more certainty, a lot more to play with, and now you've got two picks that you can involve in those trades as well. So long-winded, I know, but there's my opinion. What's yours? What do you think about the deal? I know I've been reading a lot of comments, so I'm quite certain that I know how you feel, but let me know. And in the meantime, like I said, free agency is tomorrow. It's an exciting day. I can't wait to see what happens. I want to know what Dubas and company have up their sleeve. I think there's going to be some signings. If I were to predict one, I think Sam Gagne is probably coming to Toronto. I would hope that they go after someone like Max Domi. I think that could be an appealing piece. Dylan Strom not being qualified by Chicago. Dominic Kubalik also not being qualified, Sonny Milano, Sam Steele, former potential Leafs draft pick. So lots of excitement still to come. Let's evaluate the trade as it stands today. Let's also evaluate it as it stands going into 
training camp because it could look very different. Again, could have another goalie, could have used the picks to make a move. So we'll see then. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.